I'm Roger Clipson. Before the Eureka Stockade and the Rum Rebellion, there was the Castle Hill Rebellion. That rebellion resulted in the Battle of Vinegar Hill, a culmination of multi-conspiracies, mutinies, failed uprisings, betrayals, and personal tragedy. This documentary will explore the intrinsic historic value of the uprising and what part it played in the very turbulent chapter of early European settlement. Political dissension first arose when many Irish convicts were sent to Australia following an uprising in 1798 in Ireland's Wexford County. The battle was called the Battle of Vinegar Hill. These political prisoners were exiled to Australia bearing a deep resentment for the English authorities. Once in Australia, the Irish convicts faced harsh treatment from the authorities and the natural elements. So, with an Irish passion for freedom and the compulsion to return to Ireland, these convicts planned an uprising and met the English authorities in a final showdown. The first European battle fought on Australian soil, the battle that became known as the Australian Battle of Vinegar Hill. The uprising first took place here on March the 5th, 1804, 200 years ago. The site today is Heritage Park, but 200 years ago the site was Castle Hill Government Farm, a place that enforced hard labour on convicts in harsh conditions and weather. However, to rebel against the British rule, the convicts, led by Irish rebel Philip Cunningham, rose up against the authorities of the colony and together with their supporters escaped, captured arms and marched towards Parramatta. In the search for reinforcements, the rebels turned from Parramatta and made their way to Windsor. The ensuing conflict with the British military forces took place near Rouse Hill and became known as the Battle of Vinegar Hill after the battle in Ireland. But how did the rebellion begin? Why did it take place? Where was it conceived? And who were the leaders involved? On March the 3rd, 1804, Philip Cunningham was busy hatching his rebellious plans to lay siege to the colony. The rebellion had been scheduled for the next day, March the 4th. Make sure this letter gets to Brian Fur in Hawkesbury. It's essential that he gets it tonight. It contains all the details on our Freedom Rebellion. And remember, death or liberty! Death or liberty! Cunningham sent his messenger to deliver a letter to his co-conspirator, Brian Fury, at Hawkesbury, containing the final details of the rebellion. However, the letter was intercepted and never made it. The messenger was arrested by authorities and forced by Samuel Marsden to confess the plans of the rebellion. Reverend Samuel Marsden, the Parramatta magistrate and parson, was alerted to the intended rebellion, but no action was taken. Reverend Samuel Marsden was known to the convicts as the flogging parson and was the first person to know of the rebel uprising. Believing that the letter had made it to Brian Fury, Cunningham brought his plan into fruition on March the 4th, 1804. Upon the sound of a vigorously rung bell and the lighting of a small hut, a beacon to signal the rebellion, over 200 convicts poured out of their huts and took over the government farm. To make this rebellion successful, we need weapons. Yeah! 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 The British will soon know of our rebellion. Yeah! Yeah! So go now, we shall meet again at Constitution Hill in Paramount. Forces away by setting fire to one of the farms. Yeah! Go now, we can meet again soon. And remember, death or liberty. Death or liberty! Soon the alarm was raised, and citizens and the military sprang into action. The air was rent with the sound of beating drums and gunfire, urgent tattoos to call the soldiers and the Parramatta loyalists to assemble. Get this message to Governor King and warn him of the rebels' uprising. Hurry, the rebels will be here. We've got to get to Major Johnson. It will be up to him to quell the rebellion. Major, I have drafted orders for your dispatch. You must put down this rebellion. 
I have drafted a proclamation of martial law. With it, I give you full command to carry out those orders and crush the rebellion as you see fit. Crown will not lose this colony. Your orders. Thank you, sir. We will crush these treasonous dogs. Upon orders from the Governor, Major Johnston was given command of the infantry, while the Governor declared Seven Hills, Castle Hill, Parramatta, the Nepean and Hawkesbury to be in a state of insurrection and therefore under martial law. Men! It looks like some of our friends haven't arrived, and we cannot take Parramatta today. We must head for the Hawkesbury. There we will find arms and reinforcements. Yeah. Yeah. On our way back to Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Come with me. Don't lose heart. No. No. It won't be long before we're on a boat and on our way back to Ireland. Yeah. With that, the rebels left Parramatta and headed west for reinforcements at Windsor. Believing that a convict rebellion had commenced at Windsor, Cunningham expected to find reinforcements there by setting other convicts free and getting more arms and ammunition so as to increase the rebel army. Windsor was to be a significant staging point for the rebels, but they never made it to Windsor. Men, today we shall save the colony. We must pursue these rebels at all costs. By order of the governor, it is your duty to hunt them down. The rebellion ends today! Johnston took with him Father James Dixon in the hope that he would be able to reason with the rebels. Or was it to stall them, to buy him time to attack? Johnston took his contingent of men and in pursuit of the rebels headed towards Hawkesbury. Major Johnston of the New South Wales Corps led the government troops and a group of civilians against the rebels in the Battle of Vinegar Hill at Rouse Hill. In fact, he is best remembered as the man who put down the rebellion. Johnston captured all the rebel leaders and later hanged Philip Cunningham as a mark of infamy. Once the rebels were less than one mile away, Johnston decided to stall the rebels by sending ahead an officer to call a truce. But the truce was refused. Johnston then sent Father Dixon to reason with the rebels, but to no avail. Johnston claimed that he waved a white handkerchief as a flag of truce, but whether this was to call a truce or stall the rebels was yet to be discovered. What do you rebels want? Death or liberty in a ship to take us home. <laughs> The prisoners, with their motley range of weapons, were no match for the better equipped military forces. The battle was over in 15 minutes. After 780 rounds of ammunition, the rebels were overrun. 15 of the insurgents were killed on the battlefield and an additional 30 were killed in the day-long pursuit as the convicts fanned out into the surrounding bush. Some rebels were taken prisoner. Among them was Philip Cunningham and William Johnston. By March the 8th, just four days later, the authorities had arrested all the leaders involved. Those who played a major role in the rebellion all faced a court-martial but suffered different fates. Leaders Samuel Humes and William Johnston were sentenced to hang in chains, a special mark of infamy. Philip Cunningham was executed at Windsor. He was hanged from the staircase of the government store the very place he boasted he would plunder. The convict population was left in no doubt about the meaning of the deluded slogan, death or liberty. The Castle Hill Rebellion and the Battle of Vinegar Hill is remembered today as the first European battle to ever take place on Australian soil. It preceded the Eureka Stockade and the Rum Rebellion and highlighted the emblazoned passion of freedom held by the Irish. During the battle and the aftermath, villains and heroes emerged. The Irish rebels were not bloodthirsty revolutionaries, nor were they crushed by tyranny. They were very simple men, 
who simply wanted to go home.